Did he ever say that he wasn't fucking with you, or you just felt it after the, the Angie Martinez interview? After Angie Martinez interview, we go back to the hotel. So my Uncle Rio, he in the lobby, and my dad is up in my room. So my Uncle Rio come back up to my room, he like, man, Tupac and them is on some bullshit, man. They down there talking shit and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, talking shit? I'm like, man, I ain't listening to that. What you talking about, huh? So my phone rang to my room. Broop, it's Muta, one of the outlaws. Pac said, give my ass away. And hang up. Well, that ain't finna happen. 15 minutes go by, he called back. Hey, Pac said, hey, nigga, tell Pac to call. Pac call. Hey, I need an ounce of weed. Just hang up. So I send the weed. No communication. Don't say nothing to me. So now we flying back to L.A. the next day. So normally I got two security with me that fly on the private plane. What is Suge got his homies? Pac got his security. We get to the private plane. Nigga Suge like, they can't go. Your security. They can't go. Security like, all right, well, come on with us, dog. I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm going to stay down. I'm going to ride with them. Like, this is either the moment you niggas going to kill me, or we're going to get some clarity in this air. Mm -hmm. We got a five and a half hour flight. I ain't got no security. You niggas ain't feeling me right now. This is how my life is based anyway. Did you feel like Suge felt the same way? I felt like they were fueling each other's fire. Mm -hmm. Like they was tit for tat. Like nobody would put water. Mm -hmm. Like instead of Suge saying, no, hold on, nigga, that's yeah. stupid. You know, they was fire for fire. So when we get on, when I get on the plane, after they say my security can't roll, Pac right here, another nigga right here. So I walk on. Niggas don't say nothing to me. So I sit down and I'm like, they still don't say nothing to me. Now we finna take off. I'm like, all right, I see what's finna happen. I've been around these niggas. I know how they get down. I grab me a knife and a fork, get my blanket, put my blanket over my eyes to like they right up under here. Five and a half hours like this. Sit in the back of the plane, all the way in the back. I'm the last seat. So, nigga, if somebody gonna get killed, nigga, if I'm gonna get killed, somebody dying with me. I'm just, my back against the wall. Five and a half hours, nobody say one word to me. Not one fucking word. As soon as we land, they roll the little stairs down. All oh, them niggas go out first. My Rolls Royce right here, Pac Rolls Royce right here. Go down the stairs, Pac go down. I go down, I'm like, Pac, you going to Vegas to the fight, cuz? A nigga like, that's the last thing I remember from Cuz, him doing me like this. And he was on his way to Vegas. Yep, and the next time I seen him, he was laying in the hospital. When Pac was with Death Row, were you ever concerned with Pac, how much Pac became Death Row? In the beginning, never. Mm -hmm. After I seen him jump on that side, I was concerned because being neutral was the best shit for him. To pick a side I mean you picked a side. Now you're taking on all of their enemies. Mm -hmm. When you're born in it, it becomes stripes, and it becomes what you do to struggle to get to the top. When you're not born in it, you're taking on unnecessary beefs, you're taking on unwanted mm -hmm. shit. So him being neutral in the beginning was amazing. And then him choosing sides at the end was a demise because you picked a side. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't have Did to pick a side. Did you ever talk to him about it? Or you just saw it and you felt like he probably wouldn't listen? Man, Pac was a military-minded motherfucker, so he would always, like, he always had a plan. Like, if you knew him, he knew he wasn't going to be with us long. Right. Like, and he always had a train of thought Do you of, think that's why he worked like that, too? Definitely, but his train of thought was military. Like, it became one point that he had, me and him had a meet like on some real military shit where it was like, nigga, this the new rule. This is him telling me, nigga, this the new rule. 
nigga. I talk to you, you talk to me. Your soldiers don't talk to me, nigga, and my soldiers don't talk to you. You understood? All right, I got it. Like, that's how he talking to me. Like, we the same age and all this yeah, shit, yeah. but, he, but he, he, he hit me with military shit. So we have a scenario where we out of town. And um, niggas is drinking. Crow got Hennessy, Nate, Outlaws, Tupac. We on the beach, hammer, all of us out there chilling. And he just put the law in effect that don't nobody whoop up whatever the fuck Pac said. All right, yeah, whatever, nigga. I ain't even told my niggas that, though. Because I'm not military <laughs> mind, so I forgot to tell niggas. <laughs> we got a new order. Yeah, I forgot to tell y'all. <laughs> I'm going to tell you later. So the motherfucker on the beach <clears throat> and Pac and Corrupt get into it. Like, get, get into it. Like, get physical. into it. Not physical, but About get into to. it. Like, right. to where they, like, they talking. And then Pac say some shit like, nigga. Uh, nigga, you not. He looked at me. He was like, "This corrupt right here." Nigga, you not even supposed to be talking to me. And I'm like, and the corrupt said something. Nigga, something, something, something. And nigga looked at corrupt and said, "Nigga, I'll get the outlaws to fuck you up right now." And then Nate Dog standing right behind Tupac. And Nate Dog said, "And what the fuck we supposed to do when that's happening?" And then Pac looked at Nate. He looked at me, he like, nigga, I thought we had a, I'm like, nigga, you trying to. Yeah, man. So now we, now it's, it's unorganized confusion now. So then Hammer, step in. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, and then Shook, step in, yeah. man. And, but from that day on, it was like. What was you and Pac's relationship prior to his passing? Man. I say a week before he died, we was best of friends. Two days before he died, I don't think he liked me. Why? Because we was in New York. Oh, yeah. And shit had happened. New York niggas had shot at me and did all kind of shit to me, like just the worst shit you could think of. And I forgave him and went and did an interview and was asked, how do I feel about Puffy and Biggie? And I was like, I like them niggas. I want to do some music with them. And I just rubbed cuz the wrong way, like, nigga, fuck them niggas. Them niggas tried to kill me. Niggas shot at you. And you talking about you want to do a song with them niggas? I wasn't thinking about his emotions. I was thinking about the way I felt at the time. Mm -hmm. I wasn't into no controversy. I liked them niggas' music. They was, they was our friends. We was all friends at one point. This video footage of all of us hanging out. Mm -hmm. Pop, Biggie, Puff, Suge, all of us together prior to death row. Just on some regular shit. So that to me, I never seen myself getting involved. Even when he played the video for me to uh, hit him up. Mm. Even when he played hit him up the song, I didn't like the song. Did you, yeah, did you feel like it was too much? I didn't like much? it. Right. I didn't like it. Like, I didn't like the shit. Like, it wasn't like the shit to me. Like, it was buying, you buying more problems, cuz. Like, you're buying problems. Gangsters is everywhere. They, they make them everywhere. And I think when he got with us, he got to the mind state that we the motherfuckers. Yeah. And ain't nobody like us. Always people like us everywhere. Everywhere. So you say a week before, best of friends, two days best before. Best of friends. Like, like we was in New York doing the, the award show and laughing and my hair perm. Yeah. He got me this motherfucking Hugo Ball suit and had me on some European shit. My yeah. pants was fitting tight. And he had a nigga <laughs> on some other shit. Like, nigga, let me dress you. Nigga, get you right. Suit by Dion Scott. I'm on some other shit with my nigga. Like, okay. But when we hit New York, he go gangster. He like on some stupid gangster shit. Like, but I'm on some player shit. I've been here before. New York lost Snoop Dogg. We good. But he on some, like, them niggas tried to kill me and no, uh, fuck that. And what you think about the comments that Snoop made on Big Boy that went viral where he said that he didn't like hit him up <laughs> and he wasn't a fan of it? Well, that's funny, man. <clears throat> I think it's, um, you know, for example, if, if he would have came off and say, you know, if Snoop would have said, you know, I'm older now, I got the grandkids, um, looking back at it, I don't agree with hit him up. I don't even like it now because, you know what I mean? We get much, we get older, we mature. As I'm Muslim now, 45 years old now, you know what I mean? I might not agree with the lyrics of hit him up, but when we was young, at that time, it was something that we, you know, that we was pushing. And uh, for Snoop to say he never liked hit him up and he didn't, 
You know what I mean? He never expressed that. You know, you got videos of him on stage with Pac. Pac rapping hit him up and he's rapping the lyrics right along with him. You know what I mean? So it, it's strange now that all these things are coming out and he said he didn't like hit him up. You know what I mean? If, and everybody have their opinion. Even if he didn't like hit him up back then, no problem. He have his opinion, but that wasn't the case. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? He was expressing his love for Hit Him Up. He was in the studio bopping his head. He was on the stage when Pac was performing it, singing the lyrics with him at the House of Blue. It's real strange that, you know what I mean? Like I said, I really think, you know, it's a lot of um maybe some of the things that he couldn't tell Pac face to face. He, he he's able to do it in these um these interviews. You know what I mean? It's sad. And 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 one of the reasons why I always try to correct this because him and Pac was friends. No matter how they, how they, how, how, how it ended, you know, Pac wasn't speaking to him. Deep down, he was friends. So you have individuals who hate Pac. You have individuals who don't like Pac. That's their opinion. But if you're a friend and your friend passed away, why don't you try to remember him and spread positive stuff about him? Even if you said you didn't like hit him up or even if you don't like hit him up now, why bring up the negativity of, you know, these things? Why not spread positivity of your friend so people can even, you know, try to remember him in a positive light? So it seemed like, you know what I mean? It's you know, I already know what he why why he doing that, bro. <laughs> why is that? You know, he never imagine if you the biggest star on death row and Pac come and take all your shine. You understand? And twenty five years later, Pac died, and every time you do an interview, that name is brought up. So maybe he's just trying to take that shine from Pac. You know what I mean? And Pac is not here, Pac has passed away. Like, even if that's the case. Speak about your friend in a positive light. You know what I mean? Why bring up the negative things? Why say this and that? It just it just doesn't come off right. You know what I mean? Like, check this out. Pac dis Nas. You, ne- you didn't hear Nas one time after that speak bad about Pac. And they wasn't like this. That's how Snoop should be dealing with the loss of your friend. You know what I mean? People can try to agitate Nas and say, man, but Pac said this about you. Nas will turn it about something positive. He would never let, and, and bro, and that's not even like your homie like that. So Snoop should learn this from Nas. Like, look how Nas conducting himself. He's not even letting the media or anybody put anything negative out of him to say about Pac when he had the reason. Like, he could say, man, Pac dissed me hard and died. I don't care. So what? You know what I mean? But he still kept it like, like he very honorable and respectful. He never said nothing bad about Pac ever. You never heard him say anything bad about Pac. That's how you deal with an individual that passed away. You know what I mean? Even if he's your enemy, bro. You think, for example, you know, Biggie passed away. You know what I mean? I, I, we would never say nothing bad about Biggie. It just, it just stuff we learned in the hood, bro. Once a person died, bro, leave it alone. But I guess that's the new generation. They be talking about smoking the ops and all that type of stuff. But pa- Snoop ain't from that generation. And Pac wasn't yet. And Pac ain't your enemy, bro. You, I, I seen interviews. I seen interviews where Little C spoke positive about Pac. Everybody, like, and these was his so-called enemies. But then your boy, who's supposed to be your right-hand man, every time you do an interview, he just throwing dirt on your name. It doesn't add up. You know what I mean? It doesn't add up. But people like Nas, people like Lil C's, these are people that they have every right to still talk bad about Pac. They always be positive about him. Seen on a nigga live like that. I was still getting sex back. Had to fuck around getting them packs back. Niggas. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Lord Scotty. You know, before we start this video, all I want y'all to do is smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, share this video, and make sure y'all hit that notification bell. Subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and smash that like button. It's your boy Bullets Gotti. It's the Bullets Gotti show. Salute. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Bullets Gotti. This video right here is about, you know, Snoop Dogg being the biggest hater. And, you know, with friends like Snoop Dogg, who needs enemies? You know what I'm saying? You know, if you look at, you know, Alan Hughes is doing Tupac documentary, Dear Mama. He did a video, he did an interview 
not too long ago, speaking about Pac saying he's delusional and he wasn't a gangster and all this. And then he goes and he does a documentary. You know, he's releasing a documentary on FX that tomorrow. And basically, you know, he's promoting the documentary and then trying to diminish the man legacy saying, yo, juice made him juice and juice and juice. Everybody with this juice thing. He did the role juice and he was trying to be Bishop like that. You know, so you got Snoop Dogg. He did an interview with Big Boy and he tried to discredit Pac. Trying to say Pac was wrong for him. Um, and and he, he wanna, you know, denounce Pac because it hit him up and all this. And, you know, this is why Pac said what he said about Snoop when he went on the radio and bowed down. Saying, how you mad at cops for riding on dudes that basically was on the radio dissing you? He rode out for his niggas. You know what I'm saying? They shot up Snoop and them trailer in New York. You know what I'm saying? They ain't shot up Pac trailer, they shot up Snoop trailer. You know, they shot up Snoop and them trailer. And for him, that, like, Pop can ride out. He rode out for them. You know what I mean? He rode out for DPG because Big violated them. You know what I'm saying? Big called the radio station and said, yo, stand up. Brooklyn stand, New York stand up. Brooklyn stand up. On Funk Flex. So with him saying that, and then you see how loyal, ultra loyal Pop was. And then you got dudes like Snoop. Yeah, years later since this man passed away. He trying to discredit that man's actions. That's crazy to me. That's asinine to me. To me, that's just on some fair weather friend. On some snake, just snake timing. That's your miss. You won't ride with your miss. If that's your op, then say that's your op. That wasn't your miss. Pac wasn't Snoop miss. Because you could tell you could tell Snoop wasn't Pac miss. Because if Snoop was his miss, you wouldn't even discredit him. You know what I'm saying? That's sad, man. So, really the problem is, is that Pac was loyal by default. To DPG, to Snoop, Dog Pound, because of what he heard. That basically Biggie and them, Biggie was on High 97 on Phone Flex show, calling and telling the dudes in New York, hey yo, they in Brooklyn filming New York, New York, dissing New York. Stand up. So when Pac got that news and he heard that, he did NYC 87. Which he dissed New York, which he dissed everybody for the door pam. Corrupt got on the record. Daz got on the record. You know what I'm saying? Him and Snoop was dissing Big E and Bad Boy. And then when Snoop came out here, did the interview with Andy Martinez, he's like, oh, I don't got no beef with them. I don't got no beef with them, you know? Um, but I'm cool with Big E. I'm cool. That, that shows that snake, the snake. The snake and Snoop. And he didn't show the loyalty. One thing I respect about, you know, Napoleon and the dudes that, that that's real ones to Pac. You never hear them try to diminish Pac and say, oh, he was he was tough. Uh, you know, when he did juice, that got him his extra gangster boost. Like what? When he did juice, that got him his extra boost. When you hit corrupt, shout out to corrupt. Corrupt, give him his flowers. He said, yo, Snoop. He said, Pac always was fighting. You know, you hear Smooth B said, Pac was always getting in. You know, everybody say Pac was always getting in. He was no punk. He was no sucker. So when you hear dudes like Snoop and them make him sound like he was a sucker, he was a punk, that's crazy. When Snoop told the story about Nas and Pac meeting, he tried to cap and not tell a true story that Pac had. Jersey dudes with him, 
New York dudes with them when they came to New York. You know what I'm saying? And it could have got it could have got crazy, but it didn't. You know, two brothers, Nas and Pac, squashed they beef like Nas would say. Me and Pac was from the same struggle. You know, and both of them brothers squashed they beef right there in Bryan Park. Snoop Dogg was nowhere to be found. But he'll continuously say, oh, them niggas are going to kill Pac. Them niggas are going to kill them. These cool niggas are going to kill Pac. Snoop was scared. Pac wasn't. And I think a lot of people keep missing screwing this. Snoop is a great entertainer. Don't get me wrong. I love what Snoop did, but it's the jealousy. You got to look. Dogfather was a flop. Death Row ate off of both of Pac albums. All Eyes on Me and the Seventh Day Theory, Don Caluminati. They ordered for two Tupac albums, okay? Dogfather was a flop. You know, Dogfather was a flop. You know, this is this is a dude that came off of the height of the chronic, doggy style, and murder was the case to coming out with Dogfather and flopping. Let's keep it in real. Coming out with Dogfather and flopping. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. Him and Snoop did some great music together, like Street Life, um... Joint with Charlie Wilson, they did some great joints together, but Snoop was washed like in '96. Snoop ain't start getting his way back until I would say like '99 when he did Last Meal. That Last Meal was what really got him back, you know what I'm saying? When he did Damn for My Niggas and then the Last Meal in 2000, that's what really got Snoop back in the Snoop wave. You know, because after that, like, everything was like a flop. You had that DPG. I'm just keeping it real. You know, when you look at Tupac's legacy and then you look, Snoop had a longer legacy, don't get me wrong. But for him to act like he wasn't a part of that whole East-West beefing and trying to say that Pac was home when Pac was riding for him, he, it wasn't like Pac wasn't, it wasn't vice versa, you know, Snoop riding for Pac. It was him riding, riding for Snoop. They shot up Snoop trailer. That angered Tupac. Him being loyal, he went at the whole city that he came from. Let's keep it real. Him being loyal went at the whole city that he came from. And Pac was a real one. So, Snoop is no different than a Wack 100 when Wack 100 says, oh, Pac got raped in jail and all that. He's no different than a Wack 100 when, when he said, excuse me my language, when he got sexually assaulted in jail. Like he said on, um, you know, on, you know, Clubhouse, which that wasn't even true. Wendy Williams made that up. You know, he's no different than the Hughes brothers. When you hear Alan Hughes saying, oh, Tupac, he was delusional. He was an art student. He was an activist. He wasn't a street dude. I mean, Pac never said he was a street dude, but Pac was an old sucker. Pac wasn't no, he wasn't no punk. He lived in the hood. People keep forgetting that. He lived in the hood. His mom smoked, his mom was on drugs. You know, he was on his own by 17, 18. He left, I think he was 18, 18 to 17 years old when he left Maryland and went to Marin City. You know what I'm saying? So he was grinding and hustling. He, he tell you, he sold drugs, you know what I'm saying, to survive. And it wasn't for him. You know what I'm saying? A lot of dudes dabbled in the drug game. That don't mean that they had to be gangsters. But for dudes to say, like, that's like saying Biggie was a gangster. Biggie wasn't no gangster. Biggie hustled. Biggie wasn't no gangster, though. You know what I'm saying? But everybody, people use that word gangster too loosely. Because Snoop is not a gangster. Snoop ain't started that whole big crippin' thing until he got with Dre. And they was on some, if you look at Snoop and you listen to his early raps, he was rapping like Brother J from X-Clan. You know, Snoop wasn't on no, no crippin' and all that. So, Snoop started all that crippin' stuff when he got the death row. You know what I'm saying? You know, Pac was the one that made Snoop get on his his pimp shit. You know what I'm saying? Do the do the perm and wear the suits and all that. You know what I'm saying? Pop gay niggas they style, you know what I'm saying? And like 
it be, you know, and I always respect dads and corrupt because dads and corrupt speak the facts. When they speak about, they don't lie about shit. You know what I'm saying? They not like Snoop being on some hater, on some low-key hating shit. Dads and them gonna tell the truth. Like Snoop try to lie and say, oh, Pac took Hans off the record. Dads had to correct him, say, no, Pac didn't take Hans off the record. You know what I'm saying? He said, death row did. I, not, not dad, not Pac. But he went and said that. And then said the wrong record because Nas wasn't even on the record that Method Man and Redman was on. He was on the Can't Stop record. Keep going. You know what I'm saying? Which I love both versions, the Pac and the Nas version, right? But when you listen to Snoop and you hear the hate and him not being a loyal friend, that ain't your man's. You talk all this, yo, Pac was my brother, Pac was my man's and all that, and then you try to throw daggers at that Suge. Suge was loyal to Pac. You just was mad that Pac and Suge had a real relationship. You like another Dr. Dre. You was jealous of the relationships that him and, and Pac had, which it was a real relationship. I look at it, and I like Snoop. Don't get me wrong. I love Snoop as an artist, but I just hate that he, he not being honest and he not being and he not being fair. You not being fair and honest. You going the man under the bus, and the man can't defend himself. And you've been doing this in numerous interviews. He's been throwing Pac under the bus. I understand you upset about, you know, the last time you and Pac spoke. You weren't on good terms. You know, you said it yourself. You were sitting on a plane with a knife in your hand, and you wasn't in good terms with Pac. And Pac was on the side with Suge sitting there. And you was sitting there with one eye open with a knife in your hand, and you didn't go to the fight. You said it out your own mouth. You didn't go to the fight. It was Suge and Pac. But Pac and Suge had a real brotherhood relationship and was really homies. He never threw his mans under the bus. You uh, you threw your mans under the bus. Every interview you do, you throw him under the bus. That's the thing that, 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 that bothers me. It's like, damn, dog, you going to throw this man under the bus? And not get this man his credit. Like, you not gonna even respect. Like, this man rolled out for you when niggas try to kill y'all in New York. When niggas shot y'all trailer up in New York. And this man went and did a whole diss record because of the violation. You know what I'm saying? That shows you loyalty right there. That's, that's an understatement of loyalty. But when he goes on these platforms and on these podcasts, I don't care if he goes on any podcast or any platform, big boy, whoever, he shits on Pac's name. And that's not fair. In my opinion, I feel like that's some hater, that's some hater shit. You know, that's some hater shit. But hey, it is what it is, man. It's your boy Bullets Gotti. Salute. This video, please make sure that you like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Make sure we get in the algorithm. Like, share, and subscribe if you like this this video. And hit the notification bell. It's your boy, Bullis Gotti. Bullis Gotti Show. Two Clean